Let's talk from the DOD and OEM customer side. Um, this, this would give OEMs and, and DOD agencies a, a, um, a trusted and, and accurate, hopefully, way of knowing the extent of a supplier's capabilities to operate with this kind of data. They'd have a certification. Um, something else, you know, the, the, the question that was asked about is the DOD a leader or a follower. Um, this could also have a lot of commercial ap applicability for companies. Um, you know, again, as, as, as you as companies might be thinking about diversifying your uh, market portfolios in today's environment, uh, there are other industries that are um, actively using, you know, I, I don't know if they necessarily call it model-based enterprise, but, but that are using 3D model data as, as the basis for their production. This could have an opportunity to open new market spaces for you as, as companies. And also, I think, you know, from a what's next perspective, it, a, a certification program would, would clarify the intent of the DOD um, with this. We're talking about um, here something that's, that's on the cusp but not yet really occurring. Um, I'm not a DOD guy, so I'm, I'm just going to speak my opinion, uh, not necessarily representing the DOD, but my opinion is, is that um, this is, this is going to be like a domino effect. Uh, I think that there's going to be a trigger function that's going to happen. And that trigger function is, is really going to cause, you know, dominoes to fall. Maybe that trigger function is, is, a, is a broad contract requiring uh, MBE being the basis for uh, the contract. Maybe in conjunction with that or as part of that contract, there's a requirement that folks, uh, when they comply with MBE, be certified in their compliance. Think back, um, we all somewhat familiar with STEP, right, as a standard for the exchange of product data, uh, product model data. It grew out of PDES, grew out of IGES. Um, I know there's at least one software vendor in the room. Back when STEP was first being introduced, a lot of companies would say, yeah, we're STEP compliant. What the hell did that mean? Because there was no compliance or certification attached to that. And STEP as a standard really, I think, didn't take a strong foothold within implementation until the notion of certified compliance existed. So I think that's a real strong point. Um, <clears throat> you know, again, from, a, from a, a, the standpoint of, of companies, a, a certification program, again, for both, potentially for both de defense and commercial markets, could be a great marketing tool for a company, right? Say, hey, we're, we're up the food chain. Or this is where we're operating and, and we have, uh, you know, plans in place to, to move up the food chain here. Uh, I got to believe that that would be something that would be an attractive um, uh, attribute from, from customers. And another, another reason why we're, we're interested in certification, in the room today we got several different components of the DLA. We have the Army, several components of the Army. We have several components of the Air Force. Certification here would help to coordinate the implementation uh, of this across, uh, across the, the Defense Department. So when we are talking about the potential for certification, this would be the basis. And this is the, uh, the capabilities metric that Montana flashed, um, where basically you know, a, a company would first have to understand what its capabilities are, also understand its market. Right? So if a company's operating at a, at a level one, maybe that's okay for its market. But if a company's trying to get into a market where its competitors are operating at a level five, um, they're going to be at a disadvantage if they don't have a path toward working toward that level, level five capability. And the notion here would be if certification were to be per pursued, that a couple different possibilities. And, uh, you know, these are, these are just being kicked around. Uh, could be per a mill standard. Something for the DOD guys to chew on. Some, perhaps there's an opportunity to incorporate this notion into mill standard 31,000, which talks about TDPs. Um, there's also the possibility, and, and discussions have begun within a couple of our projects, to interact with standards developing organizations that exist within the United States, like um, ISO, like ASME, uh, perhaps AIA, uh, you know, perhaps there are others. Um, or there's a possibility that, that, that there could be a hybrid approach where, you know, the DOD might ask for uh, compliance against the mill standard, 
but accept a commercial standard if a company is interested in going the path of, of uh, certification to a, to a commercial standard. If, again, if certification were to occur, um, just to, so that everyone understands, and, and you, you, most of you guys have probably been through this process, but when you get certified for something like an ISO standard, you, you go to a registrar that, 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 that will actually certify uh, your capabilities um, against that particular standard. Um, what, we're, what we'd like to see happen um, within the implementation team for, for MBE is um, the availability of assistance to companies um, to help you understand and navigate the certification process. A lot associated, but, you know, well, several of you are probably ISO 9000 certified. Was that an easy process? Maybe, probably not, you know, maybe a little bit. But the notion of, of understanding and, and being able to navigate that process is, is something that um, uh, we're suggesting that, you know, assistance needs to be available for. Um, we're also suggesting that, you know, again, not every company needs to be at the top of the certification pyramid, if you will. So it would be, I, I don't think, prudent for a company to just go, you know, headstrong and say we want to be MBE capability level 5 or MBE capability level 6 without first doing an assessment of, of where they are, what their current capabilities are, what is, what is their market strategy and where do they want to go. And then, of course, to help them progress toward desired levels. Okay. Um, how might this operate from a business model standpoint? Um, we would see this, you know, if this happens, because we would see there as being benefit for, for both the DOD, uh, OEMs, and, uh, and companies for this in the long term to be self-sustaining, where companies would, would essentially pay a fee to get certified. But we also think that if certification occurs, that um, it, it wouldn't be outside of, of the, the realm of possibilities for, for the Defense Department to somehow offer incentives to help kickstart the process. Um, you know, the, the amounts uh, of the incentives, we're still kind of thinking about exactly what that should be. Just wanted to share our thoughts with you today. Um, and, and, you know, from an incentive standpoint, it could, could apply to both actual certification itself as well as the assistance leading toward certification. And, um, you know, with the timing of that, Maybe it's this year, maybe it's next year. Uh, what I can assure you is that um, we're socializing this, this, op, uh, th this notion. And we're, um, again, from the MEP perspective, we're trying to help the DOD understand um, the issues associated with supplier perspective and implementation of this throughout the supply base. Um, I want to make a real quick, um, this isn't a sales pitch, but I just want to make you aware that the MEP, Manufacturing Extension Partnership. We've, we've done a lot of work uh, like this throughout our system um, for a number of years, helping companies go through different certifications. Uh, many of you in the room are probably not that familiar with the MEP, so I just wanted to let you know, you know exactly who we are what we do. It's a federal state private partnership. It's managed federally at NIST. We have a center in all 50 states, um, plus Puerto Rico. Got about 400 service locations. We exist to provide assistance, technical and business, to manufacturers in the United States. Our target um, company that we, that we serve is, is a small company, fewer than 500 employees. In fact, about 80% of the companies that we serve are actually fewer than 250. Um, pretty big from the federal side, 125 million in, fis in fiscal 10. Uh, cost share requirements, so there's state contributions, and it's a fee-for-service program as well. So it's not necessarily a granting institution. Um, but, um, you know, something that I'll say from a um, performance metric standpoint, um, we serve over 30,000 companies a year. Um, that's a lot of touch. That's a lot of reach. Uh, great geographic distribution. Um, and we produce real impacts. From, uh, from surveys that we conducted in fiscal 2008, um, our services resulted in over $9 billion in increased or retained sales for the companies that we served. Um, new client investments of almost $2 billion, 
uh, about a billion and a half in cost savings, and, and about 53,000 jobs created or retained. So it's a program that's out there. If you don't know about it, uh, I encourage you uh, to go to our uh, NIST website, the MEP website, www.mep.nist.gov, where you can learn more. And our last speaker of the day is actually going to be from uh, our local Michigan MEP Center uh, here in Michigan, which is headquartered in Plymouth, and he's going to talk about some of the assistance opportunities. So I'll summarize real quick. Um, We've been saying this. We, we think this is the future of DOD supply chain ops. We're, we're doing these pilots, we're doing these assessments to raise awareness, to raise literacy, to understand the issues, to kick the tires, to figure out what we need to do to implement this. It's coming. Um, we, um, we really believe that we're making a lot of progress here. There's a lot of work that's been done with respect to the technical infrastructure. That's ongoing. But really what's next is, is the implementation phase of this. Um, so the last thing that I want to say and segue into our next presentation is that we've been developing a website. And we're launching that website today. And that website site you'll be hearing about next. And we're viewing that as the resource where you can go if you want papers about MBE, if you want event announcements, if you want to get a copy of the assessment that we did, basically all the knowledge that's out there, uh, we're going to put on this website. This is something that's been sponsored by the Army Mantech program and has been um, uh, the development of, of which has been led by our, our um, Southwest Pennsylvania MEP Center. 